What's going on, everyone? I'm Wayne Grayson, and you're watching Equipment World. Welcome into another episode of The Dirt, the construction and heavy equipment news show. On this episode of The Dirt, we're going to be talking about a trend that has the potential to impact the construction industry at large, and that is data. Now, data is nothing new to the construction industry. For decades, we've depended on housing starts and construction spending and all other kinds of metrics to do work in this industry and to make educated business decisions. But what's changing is the advent of daily data and analytics reporting, and specifically the kind of data and analytics reporting that you can get from companies like Viewpoint, which is part of Trimble. Now, Viewpoint specifically has launched a new data and analytics dashboard, and I've asked Ann Hunt, the director of Viewpoint's data and analytics division, to join us today and talk about the potential impact that daily data reporting, cost comparisons, and things like that, the impact that those things can have on a construction business. Not only that, we also talk about machine learning and its potential impact on the industry and also the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and what Anne is seeing from her kind of giant dashboard, being able to look at all the trends among Viewpoint users, what she's seeing occur within this pandemic. Now, we recorded this interview a few days ago, and I'm just now getting around to shooting this introduction. So if you wonder why there's a sudden wardrobe change whenever I start talking to Anne, that is why. All that aside, let's go ahead and get into the conversation with Anne. Anne, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Wayne. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on your show today. No problem at all. And let's start by telling everyone a little bit more about Viewpoint. Now, we're going to get into the data and analytics reporting that you oversee in just a second. But I did want to start with Viewpoint One, which is your project management suite. Tell us a little bit about that and the types of things that contractors are currently getting out of that established platform. Viewpoint One is an offering that integrates from the field to the back office. It's a cloud-based solution that brings together all of your information. And it's in a secured fashion that Viewpoint manages. And it's really enabling your business to have that digital transformation. It's driving your business with powerful integrated financial and accounting tools. All right, so, um, and, and as a project management uh, a suite of, 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 of kind of software, like what, what types of, um, you know, I know that it, it, you know, it basically touches kind of every part of, of the business. So um, really, you know, everybody from the, the accounting all the way through superintendents and, and folks in the field can actually make use of it. What sort of things are you inputting into uh, this, this software and, and also kind of uh, able to view uh, on the job site, in the office, like what, what sort of capabilities does it have? Yes, it all it starts right from the project start. So they put in their project estimates, what is the estimated labor, estimated cost of this project, and then they can even start to schedule out each individual item. Then from there, they can manage the transaction level. So if they get a change order or a cost of materials, that would all flow into the viewpoint system. And then, then they can create financial reports from that. And then on the mobile side, in the field, they can put in labor, um, track the hours of the employees. So it really brings together all the different components of the construction workflow. All right, so you've got this, this excellent kind of project management suite that, that really touches every part of the business and gives you kind of access and insight into all those parts in, in one kind of dashboard, um, all the way from uh, you know, accounting and estimating to, to daily checklists, superintendents. Um, but but now you guys have added a data and analytics reporting tool in Viewpoint Analytics. So what kind of data reporting does this give contractors access to? And, and, and what kind of insights are they gaining from Viewpoint Analytics that, that maybe weren't there before in Viewpoint 1? Yes, Viewpoint Analytics is delivered as, view, as part of the Viewpoint 1 management suite. And now it gives the capabilities of customer reporting along with out of the box reporting. So you can have your financial reports, or if you wanna really dive into that data that's available, you can start looking at unit cost per hour. You could start trending and tracking your project progress and your estimates versus your actuals. Really all of the data is brought together in this nice user interface where it's drag and drop, easy to analyze information for a PM or from your CFO and you can give them reports from it. This is really important to have that history to understand what's going to happen in the future. That's the core of analytics, using that predictive side of it, knowing what happened in the past to inform tomorrow's insights. 
Um, it gives contractors a simple self-service drag and drop report that you can easily assemble and share these insights across the organization. You can get contract summaries, job costs, a really interesting metric that's been important lately with COVID has been your labor, um, tracking your labor costs. You can only have a certain number of people at a job location these days, so it's really slowing down their businesses. So how do you get the most out of that? Additionally, in Viewpoint Analytics, we're bringing in industry benchmarks from CFMA. These financial benchmarks directly help understand how are you performing against key construction industries and giving you that perspective of the world and the industry. Now, uh, another thing, yeah, you, you just mentioned kind of uh, the, the, this, this ability to kind of compare and just kind of as a follow up to that last question, um, what are some of the things that contractors for, from your experience or uh, what, what, have, what has been some of the feedback and things that they're most interested in seeing comparisons of in terms of the other aggregate data that you guys kind of uh, gather from the industry and being able to like compare costs, being able to uh, really compare other elements of the project. And what are some of the things that, that you all, whenever you were kind of designing this platform, were kind of keyed in on in terms of giving them comparisons to? What are, what are some of like the key comparison uh, data points? Yes, most recently we created a construction activity dashboard to help give that sense of how are you performing in these very uncertain times and we're starting to track project starts project closes and we could see that initial impact immediately during covid that um, project starts were delayed and then they started to pick back up in may and june but unfortunately here in july we can see that they're starting to slow down again so again getting that concept how is my business doing to everyone else are other people experiencing that same slowdown give them a sense of, okay, what can we do different? How are we gonna manage in these times? Additionally, one that people again have been really interested in is that labor, the new onboarding of employees has not come back and we just see a steady state on holding there. And so that's giving people reassurance that their business is not growing either. Now, I understand that this data reporting uh, can be accessed through Viewpoint One but it's also, is, is it also, it's kind of like own standalone thing. Tell me a little bit more about how analytics uh, can be used through Viewpoint. Can it be, you know, used as an extension of the project management software in addition to kind of standing on its own? How does that integration kind of work? They are really tied together. We want to make sure that this data from your system is brought into Viewpoint Analytics. Without the data, how are you going to do that reporting? And additionally, we want to make sure that data is timely, it's clean, it's accurate. So that's another benefit of Viewpoint Analytics. We're bringing in that data, making sure it's clean, timely, and secure, and having it be drag and drop simple for people to use and understand is that flexibility. All right, so obviously, you know, construction data itself is nothing new. We've been tracking starts, permits, growth rates, um, and spending numbers. Uh, for years now, but this this macro level of data reporting and and making that available to individual contractors, not just on a quarterly or a monthly basis as we've done in the past, but on a daily basis. That's that's very new. So from from your perspective, and how powerful is this new dynamic? What types of changes can a contractor armed with this information expect to see moving forward? The real-time data is really game-changing for the industry. They can start to see what's happening in the moment and make better decisions, more informed decisions on how to make a change. So if they aren't getting to the productivity levels they're seeing, maybe they can bring on extra guys tomorrow. They can also look at providing budgets that are overrunning. They can see that Today we got a change order. How are we going to adjust our forecast immediately versus doing monthly budgets and schedules? So I think all of these are really important. And this is looking at construction industries more of on a data culture. We're starting to see that we need to treat our data differently. We can't be using old reporting that's laggy. We need to have systems like Viewpoint One and Viewpoint Analytics to help manage this because these times are tight. So this is really game changing for the industry. I did see one customer yesterday, I was on a customer call where we were watching a project manager do their job 
and he had five reports open and he was trying to figure out, okay, this happened and then this happened and he was going through all these different columns and just the level of effort that he was going through could just be changed by having it all in one system and seeing the trend and impact. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and over on the Viewpoint website, you've got actually a few blog posts up that you have written um, examining data and other trends in the construction industry. You actually mentioned a couple of those data points earlier. A couple of those posts deal with the aggregate data that Viewpoint One users have input, and, and they point out potential industry trends within that data. And another of your posts details machine learning and how it could benefit construction. So how much of that data-fueled machine learning is Viewpoint providing to its analytics customers right now? Machine learning uses historical information to understand what's going to happen in the future. Machine learning uses algorithms. There's a variety of different types of algorithms from supervised to unsupervised. Supervised means that you know the outcome of that prediction. You take an input and you label the output of that prediction. So you're training that machine on something you already know, and then you test it against something that you do not know. And that's where you get that accuracy of a model. Unsupervised learning means that you don't know what classification is already pre-assigned to that data set. You're looking for the machine to tweeze apart that information and understand what that output is, giving you that insight. It's a lot harder to do the unsupervised, and analysts love the supervised learning. And so that's what machine learning does. You're taking data, you're labeling it, you're training it, and you're manipulating the algorithms to get your best prediction. But it can take a lot of data, and it, it can take hundreds of data elements and hundreds of data sets and bring them together to understand what the correlation is or what the cause is behind these projections or incidents. Why did this project fail or why did it not make as much margin? And we can start to even taste that and say, this project is likely to make a certain dollar value. We can create predictions going forward to understand the risk or understand the opportunity that could happen in the future. And it also understands um, the variance between different jobs. So it's giving humans another tool to use to understand all this complex data in a faster, more efficient way. Now, kind of as a follow up to that question, and, and you know, we're, we were kind of uh, zoomed in on what you guys are currently offering now and kind of how those things are, are helping customers. But if we kind of like zoom way back out again, just looking at like the machine learning trend uh, in general, um, you know, it's, it's slowly kind of creeping into our daily lives. And this is like a really nice touch point for the construction industry in terms of, you know, really putting that, um, which is still kind of in its infancy to, to use. And you kind of touched upon that a little bit in your blog post on the viewpoint site. But if we zoom back out and look at machine learning as kind of like a, uh, something with a lot of potential energy still, what, what kind of things do, do you foresee in terms of that potential in kind of like, you know, big kind of uh, thought provoking ways that machine learning will impact the construction industry, not just now, but kind of like in the next five years or so? Viewpoint is really investing in our data and the next kind of data strategy that we're playing. They, we actually created an incubation team for R&D to start building out new and novel data first opportunities, taking that aggregated data and start to mine it to see what's important. How can we help our customers? And one of the new initiatives that we're actually working on is helping understand if this job is going to be profitable. So you get a job and you bid on it. What's your expected margin based on past historical jobs? We can give you with confidence what that outcome will be. We can also give within each of those, we can take it a, a level deeper by looking at specific costs and giving you the risk profile on those costs. So we can compare that job to similar jobs to understand that risk profile. So I think that is gonna be really important to, going forward to understand what risk are you taking on by taking this job. And so this is just one of those machine learning opportunities that we've been looking at. We're additionally looking at doing a machine learning application to look at the cost curve. Again, looking at the predictions. What is your predicted 
spend for the next month based on last month's spend, or even like you were talking about those daily, we could say, okay, today you spent $100. What is the likelihood that you're going to spend more than you budgeted tomorrow? Yes, the term connected construction has been used frequently, especially within Trimble. We have tons of applications from the pre-bid all the way into the financial reporting. Really connecting those workflows is going to be key in the future. They're starting to put IoT devices on the construction sites, so looking at cameras. Is this site going to be safe for employees? They can continuously monitor the safety of the employees from a safe perspective. Are they on a high rise? Do they have the right equipment? Um, they can also have wearable devices. They're putting even sensors in the con into the concrete to say, how is this going to cure? What is the weather like? What's the best application for that? And then you can also think about in the future, having those cameras on the site with the BIM model to show what is your actual productivity for that day. You can see the as built to the actual instance on the construction site. Then integrating that all back into your financial system to understand what is this costing you? Are you, again, on budget? Are you missing anything? So I think overall, things are going to become more seamless, more automated in the construction industry. Yeah, I mean, and obviously, I think up until this point, we've, we've really talked about automation in the, in the sense of kind of machines. Um, but, you know, the, the, the prospect of automation in data reporting the prospect of automation in terms of connected machines, you know, alerting you before, you know, something catastrophic happens to the engine and it gives you a lot of downtime. The prospect of, you know, your viewpoint dashboard alerting you to some kind of discrepancy in cost or estimation or, or labor or something like that. That is that is potentially a, a huge uh, kind of game changer. And it kind of brings up a follow up for me in, in the sense that, you know, obviously you a huge part of your job it is kind of, uh, you know, while you guys are giving contractors individual data sets to kind of look at centered around their business, your job is to kind of take this like fire hose uh, of data that's kind of coming out of the viewpoint platform, look at all of it and try to discern some kind of, of trends with the industry. And, and, and obviously, you know, that gives you a lot of kind of material to, to write about uh, in the blog and kind of like that, that kind of helpful aspect of it. But also, I would imagine that it's, it's also going back into the development, the further development of this new analytics dashboard of Viewpoint One in general. Could, could you kind of tell me a little bit about that, about how you're actually taking, um, you know, the, the contractors aren't the only ones who are going to be viewing this data. You're actually looking at this data, trying to discern trends, and then obviously putting that back into the development. Tell me a little bit about that process for you personally. Yeah, so in the future, we're starting to think about the smart ERP. So we are taking what they're currently doing today, using the data to say, how can we help inform those decisions? So if I, as a project manager, sit at my desk, what, thing, what are the top 10 things I should do immediately? Bring it to their attention. Or say, on a budget, you need to move this money from one part to another. Help them make those decisions. Provide recommendations to enhance their experience and their profitability of their jobs and their company. All right, so kind of moving on to what you're seeing play out in the industry right now at the business level. Uh, in a recent blog post you wrote in June, you noted that uh, according to the data that you were seeing coming out of Viewpoint One, construction activity, uh, purchase orders, billing, and some other indicators had actually trended upward uh, from the start of 2020, even through the the uh, coronavirus pandemic kind of taking hold. However, in a July follow-up uh, post, uh, you noted that project management activity had actually dropped 4.1%, while other activities surrounding projects like the number of documents, uh, drawings, and, and really other things uh, going into Viewpoint had actually fallen off a pretty significant amount, about 20%. So obviously the, that Viewpoint data is just a snapshot, uh, but what does that data tell you about the impact of the pandemic um, and how how a study of analytics and reporting uh, you know, benefit contractors at, or can benefit contractors as they continue to navigate, you know, out, not only out of this, just this crisis, but of out, you know, maybe out of the, you know, the recession that's now upon us and, and, and future kind of economic crises. Yes, Viewpoint started pulling six industry metrics shortly after COVID started and many construction sites just start to slow down and shut down completely, leaving us to wonder how it was impacting the industry in real time. So we continuously monitor these and they are updated daily. 
But ultimately, we do want to see those trends behind the scenes. So we did initially see a lot of construction projects slow down and were forced to shut down in March, but then resumed back up in May and June. So that's when we saw that tick up and that spike of when those projects started to resume, the work was being done and we could see that activity happening on the dashboard. But then here in July, we started to see that the backlog started to decrease and not a lot of new projects were opening up. And so that's when we started to see that there was that tick up in activity, but now it's starting to slow down here in July. And even anecdotally from other customers, they're saying they are experiencing that slowdown on new projects starting up. I think there's a lot of caution in the industry. Now you mentioned receiving a little bit of feedback uh, from, from customers there. Now is, uh, have they kind of gone into some of the, some of the things that are, are causing these backlogs to shrink that are causing uh, some of that extra caution on, on the client or owner side of things? Yes, they have. Um, most of the time that the projects that were going to start, they ultimately got closed. I think some of the new funding that was budgeted was shifted away from those new projects. Just again, I think there's a lot of caution in the industry. There's talk about an, another wave of COVID happening here in November, just with the colder weather, the flu season. So again, I think people are being very cautious on the cash flow that they have and keeping a ton of cash flow in their business. Additionally, just again, getting back to that, that was very similar into the labor. They're not hiring on new labor force and just keeping where they're at and holding steady. So it will be interesting here coming up in the next few months to see if that pattern stays true. Now, from those contractors that, that you have heard from, have, have any of them by, by any chance kind of gone into, we see this through the, through the data reporting, um, we're, we're feeling it, it's kind of, you know, and some contractors that, you know, over the years, I've talked to several that kind of have a spidey sense about this type of thing. They've, they've been in business long enough to where, you know, they can kind of, they can kind of sense almost as a sixth sense. Uh, kind of these economic trends happening. They they know that you know things have been too good for too long. They kind of, you know obviously with a platform like this, you you don't have to have the spidey sense anymore. You can just kind of uh, you or you can confirm you, you know the biases of your spidey sense, I guess, uh, with an analytics platform like this. So a lot of them don't just sit still when they see a change or a sea change happening like that, or you know. But maybe they they sensed, uh, you know, this is kind of crazy. You know, we've we've been super busy even with what's been going on. You know, uh, things might be about to fall off soon. How many of those those folks that you have talked to uh, ha have already kind of implemented some kind of you know backup strategy or or plan B in terms of okay, I'm okay now, but things are going to start falling off soon, or they already have. Have any of them communicated like what what they're you know doing about that yet? Yes, I would say a majority of the customers have a like a plan B backup, a plan C backup, even in the back office, their businesses were affected and had to shift to remote working. So they had to have new processes in order to manage payroll and manage employees in the field. And I don't think anyone kind of had a sense this was going to happen. I think they're still cautious of what's happening and going to happen. And they've revised on how they are taking on projects. Is it too risky? So I think it is important to understand your risk you're taking on. And I think people are kind of taking less risk and taking on projects that they've done in the past, they know are profitable, they know they can execute upon them, they have the labor to do it. And using all that data is really important. You're making data-driven decisions to help your business. Now, I know that, you know, really, and, and this kind of goes for us, too, in terms of just covering the industry, uh, even on the machine side of things, there's just been, you know, very deep impacts uh, from the pandemic, uh, just on the supply side of manufacturers. I mean, the supply side for, for contractors, obviously, lots of deep and, you know, clearly uh, long lasting impacts that this, this whole pandemic is going to have on the industry. But you know, if you're able to, if, if it's not kind of too obstructing to kind of your whole view of the industry, uh, it, do you see any other kind of trends kind of cropping up? In one of your posts, you mentioned, you know, this was supposed to be, you know, a pretty nice year in terms of activity growth for construction, you know, before the impact of the pandemic took place. Are you able still to kind of uh, get a good sense of other things that are kind of happening below this kind of like veneer of the coronavirus and the impact it's having? What what are the kind of things are you seeing based on based on the data? 
We actually started to bring in third party um, stock information on residential housing. There's um, industry information out there and we're starting to monitor how is that trending compared to viewpoint data. So we're seeing those similarities on the kind of the volatility of the market. So as the, the residential stock markets are going down, project starts are going down. And so that's a pretty interesting indicator that we're seeing. Um, and we're starting to see some forecasts that are saying that it will tick up here in a couple months. Um, there's usually a big push to finish projects at the end of the year. And then typically in January is when new projects again start. Um, so that's kind of our forecast of what's happening around in the industry. Yeah, I mean, and, and there was, you know, just in terms of like, if you pay a, uh, attention to kind of uh, like data reports coming out from from firms like Dodge uh, or, or other kind of construction kind of tracking firms, um, you know, everyone's been trying to forecast the next recession for like, I feel like the past two, two and a half years. And so 2019, there was some forecast that it was going to happen then when it didn't, you know, there was some growth projected for construction, but there was always kind of like in the back of back of everybody's mind like well it could occur in 2020 and then the pandemic hit and we're at least in the middle of like a, a mini recession and there there has been lots of talk um especially within the industry about you know you know if if they did see some kind of like fall off during the pandemic especially if they were in like a hot spot like at the very beginning like like new york new jersey that area um it, lots of places up northeast where they fully expected to uh, be be rock and rolling again by kind of like midsummer and 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 into fall, and and that's kind of what makes this kind of like whole line of questioning a little bit difficult because so much of it has been kind of like obfuscated. Um, but you know, it, 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 is there much of that kind of um, uh, kind of reporting or forecasting still kind of going on for the potential of that recession hitting before the pandemic or? Uh, ha has the pandemic brought on kind of like uh, more quickly the the recession that so many were trying to forecast um, a couple of years ago? One way we're trying to help our customers is, is provide more benchmarks to understand what is happening, some explainability. So we're giving them, again, the job starts, labor metrics. We're also starting to give some financial benchmarks on what is a typical margin on these jobs looking at across regions because each state is experiencing different um, impacts on this. And so we're starting to track by different states, how many employees are working by a state or a region, are we seeing upticks? So we're gonna to continue to add in benchmarks to help our customers understand how are they doing compared to the industry? And even internally, how is their performance doing against other projects and other metrics? Well, I know at the very beginning of, of this whole pandemic, you know, one of our first questions was, as, as we kind of talked to contractors from different parts of the country, was they were all telling us like very, very different things. So having that state by state uh, re reporting um, would, would definitely be helpful just because, I mean, it doesn't really do a contractor any good in Texas to, you know, to compare himself to somebody that's in New York or even like hear <laughs> that perspective at all, uh, to, to be quite honest. So what yeah could you kind of go into like in the in the viewpoint platform how just how contractors can like manually kind of dig into some of those comparisons what does that what does that look like i guess with with this kind of pandemic and what's going on right now is kind of like the, the context or the framing for that so ultimately viewpoint is using viewpoint analytics to give companies the ability to build out reports and compare this project compared to another project and then we're going to continue to build out these benchmarks into a an offering that they can start to compare how are they doing to a similar contract or in a region. And so this is not yet released, but we're working on these capabilities. The incubation team, that R&D team that Viewpoint has created is starting to create those benchmarks and get some customer feedback. So then we need a mechanism to release them so everyone can use them. One of the things that, that you mentioned to me was that, you know, obviously you, you, you're, you're providing this, this data reporting uh, and there's a lot of potential there for change, but, but there were already some contractors who had, who had kind of already kind of, uh, you know, uh, gotten a little bit of a uh, new perspective and already seen the potential there and actually have started to like create positions uh, around data. And uh, one of the other things that you told me that was kind of surprising was that, you know, one of the companies you had seen at least that had done that 
what was not like a you know a big company was not like a hundred million in revenue and up was actually again kind of like a pretty medium sized contract medium to large sized contractor at fifty million in revenue a year. Um, talk a little bit about what you've seen from that perspective in terms of that customer demand uh, for data and exactly what they are keying in on uh, in terms of the, the data that they feel like they need uh, to kind of run their business effectively. I think companies are really transitioning into a new mindset. They're really starting to think about a data culture and data strategy that's evolutionary to their business. They've done construction for many years, but now margins are getting tighter, business is getting tighter, um, there's more competition within the market. So they need a way to differentiate their business, make sure they can gain those profits. And so they're bringing in-house data managers or starting to collect their data and bringing it all together for that reporting and analytics, which Viewpoint does help with. And they're bringing in benchmarks and statistics to help give access to their PM, such as they call it a combined crew rate, to make sure that this crew is efficient. And that's only possible if the data is there in a clean manner on a real-time basis. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for us today on our discussion around data and the construction industry, and specifically viewpoint data and analytics. I really appreciate Anne joining us. It was a really interesting conversation. And we wanna know what you guys are thinking. Let us know what you think about the impact of data on the construction industry, how useful daily data reports could be to your business. Whatever you're thinking, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video or found the information and useful in any kind of way, please please do us a favor and hit that like button below. It really does help our channel out. And if you want more videos on the latest in the construction industry, heavy equipment, gear, trucks, and more, subscribe to our channel today and hit the bell. Turn on notifications so you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We always appreciate your time and we will see you next time.